is here. No problem. They'll be there soon. We have been waiting for almost an hour. My friend, this is Melapur. Those who wait and do not leave, what they want, they will receive. Uh, I'm a poet also, a uh, beggar and a poet. A man of many talents. Well, I need to beg you for my God that you will open the hearts of your people tonight. I would like to train off if you don't mind. You may certainly join me if you wish. No, 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 no. Too many beggars spoil the trash heap.
you don't understand our world and our way of life. Uh, but if you were to preach with an Indian heart and an Indian voice, perhaps they would listen. Uh, but I still doubt it. An Indian voice and heart, mm. that's a difficult goal to reach. What's your second reason? <laughs> well, you see, nobody believes what you're saying, Father. Your stories are just like all of our other myths, <laughs> fantasies created by men. Pariah, I promise you without any doubt that what I'm saying is true. I'm an eyewitness. <laughs> I know all about witnesses. <laughs> Only men tell us about the ingredients of God, about hearing voices from the heaven, about wrestling with demons, dancing in the celestial world, and all other such nonsense. <laughs> Who can really know if it's true or not? Pariah, the next time you travel to the Jewish colonies in Madras, ask them to show you the scroll of Prophet Isaiah. Then ask them to show you the prophecies about the Messiah. Then ask them to show you the scroll of Zechariah, the scroll of Micah. And the Psalms, ask them to show you all of the prophecies in these scrolls. They all point to the coming of the Son of God, His life, His ministry, His death, and His rising from the dead. This means nothing. <laughs> all of these were written after your Jesus came and left. No. Ask the Jews to show you their ancient copies of their scriptures that prove these prophecies had been written long before Jesus Christ was born. And. Uh, you have seen such ancient Jewish copies? Yes, I have. Okay. I believe you about these prophecies. I don't think you would lie to me. Thank you. And, and Jesus himself cannot be alive. I saw him and I walked with him. What? I'm an eyewitness for I am. I not only saw this Jesus Christ, I journeyed throughout our land with him for over three years. Not only did I hear his teaching, but often he and I spoke together, prayed together, laughed together, wept together. I saw him arrested. I saw them beat him. I stood before his tomb after they crucified him. He is dead? He was dead for three days, but no longer. On the third day, he returned to life. Hey. Possible. I saw him in his risen glory. I even touched him. I thought you would always tell me the truth. I will always tell you the truth. Then why are you lying to me now? You filthy father. I'm not lying, Priya. The story you just told me is nothing more than a religious fantasy. I actually saw these things happen right before me. I'm an eyewitness and I'm willing to die for this. <laughs> Lots of mystics and holy men die for what they believe. Yes, they do. But this is different. I'm willing to die because I actually saw these things firsthand. When holy men die for their religion, it is because of something they were taught or because they have an amazing religious experience. I'm willing to die because I was there when Jesus was arrested and I saw him after he had risen from the dead. I'm an eyewitness. I cannot believe that your Jesus rose from the dead. I understand. When I stood before his tomb the day after the put him to death, I swore I would never again trust any religious teacher. The weekend he died, I lost all hope in believing anything ever again. I swore the same thing a long time ago. But something happened on the Sunday morning, two days after his crucifixion. My world was changed forever. I was cowering in my secret place, hiding from the ones who had crucified Jesus. Some of Jesus' disciples found me, grabbed hold of me, weeping and said, He's alive! He's alive! We have seen him! I said to them, No, I will not believe he's alive. Until I see the nail scars on his hand and put, the, put my hand in the hole in his side. And that's what I am saying to you. 
Eight days later, I was together with some of his followers. Suddenly, Jesus Christ appeared in the room. Even though the doors were locked, he held his hand out to me and said, Here, Thomas, put your finger here and examine my hand. Extend your hand and put it into my side. You This would be a dangerous crowd to preach good news if it's not really good news. Don't you agree? Make it dangerous for liars! But it is good news, Pariah. I was there. The truth about Jesus Christ is worth dying for. Down the way! I pledge myself not to trust anyone. I thought there was something different about you, Father. Now I know better. You have taught me one thing for now, never to trust anyone, no matter how good they seem. I hope that your opinion someday will change. If you hope that, that's a proof that you truly are a fool. <laughs> <laughs>